Good morning. I'm really glad to be here as a spokesperson for the California Mental Health Planning Council. I'm pretty sure that you all know that the Planning Council is something that is part of a federal mandate having to do with the SAMHSA Block Grant. And there are mental health planning councils or advisory councils across the country. And we have worked on looking at evaluation and quality improvement of mental health services. I'm a consumer-related advocate on the council. So um, the Welfare and Institutions Code, Section uh, 5772, has information about what we are supposed to do. Uh, as you all know, things are changing a lot, but this section describes some of our responsibilities that we are still trying to accomplish. The California Mental Health Planning Council shall have the powers and authority necessary to carry out the duties imposed upon it by this chapter, including but not limited to the following. To advocate for effective quality mental health programs. To review, assess, and make recommendations regarding all components of California's mental health system. And to report as necessary to the legislature, the State Department of Healthcare Services, local boards, and local programs. Obviously, once upon a time, this was the State Department of Mental Health, but that's changing. To review program performance in delivering mental health services by annually reviewing performance outcome data as follows. To review and approve the performance outcome measures. To review the performance of mental health programs based on performance outcome data and other reports from the State Department of Healthcare Services and other sources. So just to let you know, the Mental Health Planning Council is very similar in a lot of ways to county mental health boards, which I used to be on one also. But the federal mandate also requires that we include representatives from these state departments. I just wanted to let you know it wasn't just uh, 50, we're at least 51% consumers, family members, and advocates. But we also have representatives from what, well, we used to, from the Department of Mental Health, education, vocational rehabilitation, criminal justice, housing, social services, and health services, which has always been Medi-Cal for us. So we know that evaluation and quality improvement are very important. So we plan definitely to work with the Department of Healthcare Services on the performance indicators going forward because that is part of our responsibility. So you may be aware of this performance indicators document that was published a number of years ago. Uh, it was called Performance Indicators for Evaluating the Mental Health System. And it was for evaluating MHSA and also the public mental health system. It was published um, close to three years ago, January of 2010. So I put the link about where you could actually access this if you wanted to. I know that you don't have a copy of my presentation because it took me a little while. I was on the road trying to turn it into slides. But if you Google the Mental Health Planning Council and you choose the one that is DHCS based, then it, you look under what's new. It's not that new. It says Performance Indicator Proposal 2011, even though it was actually published the year before. But if you click there, you'll get the PDF. So the indicators that we included were individual client outcomes. Those were measured using data from those in the FSP Full Service Partnerships Program. Also, we used county mental health system performance and community indicators. Some of those had to do with do people have housing and other things you know, that aren't specifically mental health related. Also, the Mental Health Services Oversight and Accountability Commission, that's OAC, which Renee will be talking to you. Um, they've contracted with UCLA to do evaluations. And they previously <coughs> utilized a number of the indicators that we had developed in their studies. So a uh, discussion about performance outcomes has officially been on the landscape 
Well, somebody told me, uh, I left the word since in there, it doesn't belong, but for many years, since 1988, the Citizens Advisory Council, this is before there was a mental health planning council, they produced a paper toward client outcome evaluation system of care in 1988. But still, some people don't know what the purpose is of collecting the data and how it's going to be used. So providers don't like having to fill out too much extra paperwork because they feel like it limits the time that they have with their clients. Now that we have electronic records, we need to make sure that it stays simple. Unfortunately, a number of providers are kind of not happy about having to switch over to electronic health records. We, don't, we hope that they don't leave our workforce. We don't want to add a burden to them because we don't want to create any kind of resistance to this process. We know that finding out the quality and the outcomes is uh, very important across the healthcare world, whether we're talking about mental health or physical health. Everybody wants to improve quality and outcomes and lower cost. So. Um, we just want to make sure that we're going to be able to get the data we need. There are different levels. Obviously, there's the system-wide level. There's also community level and individual providers and clients, all different ways that you can measure performance outcomes. And people want to remember, it's not just about the system as a whole. Um, and again, it's not just about monitoring the data, but looking for quality improvement. Okay, we're looking at the data, but does it show that things are improving is another important question. So uh, one important purpose of all this is to help the providers, the consumers, and the family know if things are getting better. Provi providers need to get their own data back so they can see, am I doing better? Have I learned? You know, are my patients benefiting from what I have learned, as well as, you know, are they getting healthier? Because it's important to know whether they're accomplishing what they're trying to do. And we also know that the state has requirements to demonstrate effectiveness of care, and information provided to the administration should be used to help improve client care. And we know also that it has to be accurate and timely, and that was one of the issues. Um, it's very important that the data is used to show the public and the legislature that our programs are positively affecting people and are cost effective, or either they're, you know, we're avoiding costs because we're doing things early or preventing problems. Um, and we think that it's probably a good idea also to check in with some other states to see you know, what they're doing about measuring performance outcomes and so forth and how it's working for them. So a couple other things that the Planning Council's done. We have the Mental Health Board work, a book project, which we developed to help the boards and commissions understand the data and use it to review their program effectiveness in their counties. And in order to make sure that they had the technical assistance, the Planning Council contracted for some regional one-day training sessions for the mental health boards on how to use the data that they receive. The only problem was that the data that we had available from the state at that point was a number of years old and a lot of people perceived it as being not very useful. So we're hoping that we can get more current data because that is more effective. So we're looking at other data sources, alternative sources that could provide more current and pertinent data. Um, the external quality review organization, EQRO, they collect Medi-Cal data, which you know we know that's just one of the payers, but it's a big payer for the patients that we serve, and it, their data is more recent, so maybe it would be more useful. And it's public, so we're, we've, we're interested in that possibility. We haven't yet actually talked to them about their data. 
and we would be interested in working with UCLA on their projects going forward. I'm sure that you all know Ann Arneal P. She was our former executive officer. She worked on this for a long time, but she's retired. So now we are hiring staff with data and outcome expertise so we can continue this work. And the last thing that I want to talk about in terms of evaluation is the SAMHSA block grant evaluations. Um, the Department of Mental Health used to do them and they kind of ran out of steam. So for the last two years, the Planning Council has been doing three annual evaluations of different SAMHSA funded projects across the state. Um, every state is required as part of the block grant to review at least 5%. So we have 58 counties, so we figure three counties is 5%. And we've been trying to do that. And we know it's changing now that the structure of the mental health department has changed. But we still hope to be included in that process. So um, thank you very much. And the Planning Council is glad to be here with you.